Hey everyone, I want to close up with Martin Alkoff here by relating two notions that I've talked about in the past two lectures, one being the self and Martin Alkoff's concept of the self, and the other being mastery. So mastery, to remind you, I introduced a couple of lectures ago as, in one sense, the um, complete alignment of one's intentions with one's effects, at least with respect to uh, an event of speaking, a discursive event. Um, <clears throat> This, this concept comes into play also with her notion of selfhood, and I talked last time about her notion of selfhood as one that is really um, views the self as abstracted out of a whole network of belonging, network of um, relations of forces. Um, the self is something that is a part of something larger, not something that kind of comes from within itself. Um, so mastery and selfhood. Um, there is a natural desire that she addresses to have mastery over oneself. In the discursive sense, that would mean to really have alignment between one's intentions and their effects, to really um, have the effect that one intends with all of one's acts of speech or all of one's actions outside of the discursive realm, right? Just to be able to really control um, one's context. And context is really the, the great limiting factor on one's self-mastery. Um, context is what steps in between you and your ability to really control the circumstances into which you're intervening. Um, so there is this kind of natural desire for self-mastery. There is also, on the other hand, the desire for mastery of others, the desire to dominate others, the desire to stand out the most, the desire to get the most attention. All right, I mean, this is a, a natural thing that's that's expressed in all kinds of ways in society. You know, class difference, inequality, um, the oppression of, of one race by another. These are all expressions on the broader societal level of the desire to dominate the desire to have power over another. Um, we can go back to Nietzsche for some, some good insights on that desire, right? So I want to talk here about what is what exactly is the relationship between those two desires for mastery, the desire for mastery over self and the desire for mastery over others. Because on the one hand, the desire for mastery over self is in principle not a bad thing. In the terms in which Martin Alkoff is speaking, you know, we we want to actually have as much control over the effects of our discourse as we can. That means being more careful about our speech. That means being really sensitive to the context in which we operate, being really sensitive to all the different parties that are going to be affected by the things that we say. Um, those are all things that increase our self-mastery, that increase our ability to really be the masters of what we say and, and their effects. Um, in fact, I think, and this is probably all I'm going to say about this, at the very end of the essay, you get this list of four interrogatory practices. This is what you get really instead of any kind of formulaic answer to the problem of speaking for others. You know, Martin Alkoff refuses to simply tell you, here are the situations in which you can speak for others, here are the ones in which you can't. Instead, she gives you these four interrogatory practices. Well, all of these four practices have to do with the relationship between self-mastery and, and mastery over others. Um, several of them have to do with, uh, well, the first of them has to do with, with criticizing one's um, desire to speak in every situation because, and, and to recognize that as a desire to have mastery over others. Um, it's also, though, a desire to have mastery over oneself. And you could say that Martine Alkoff treats these two desires as continuous, that the desire to have mastery over others is kind of an extension of the desire to have full mastery over oneself. Um, you could think about it in that way. Um, really, I think that you should think of the these four interrogatory practices as attempts to draw the proper boundaries between these two desires for mastery. So attempts to um, have as much mastery over the effects of one's speech as is possible within the particular context in which one speaks, on the one hand, and also to limit and minimize the mastery that one has over other people, the domination that one has over the other people involved in the situation um, as a result of that speech. So on the one hand, even though these desires might be kind of expressions of each other, they might be continuously related, I think the um, 
outcome of Martin Alcoff's intervention here is to kind of maximize the one while minimizing the other. We want to have self-mastery as much as possible in the sense that we want to be as conscious as possible of the context in which we exist. We want to be as conscious as possible of the different things that determine us outside of our control, that determine the effects of our actions outside of our control. But we also want to recognize our natural desire to uh, dominate others, to be more powerful than others, to occupy positions of greater privilege than others, and to fight against that particular desire. So this is, I think, not a an easy dilemma that she leaves us with, but is a different dilemma from the one that we started with, right? So we started with um, the dilemma of whether or not it's okay to speak for others from a position of privilege, um, which, of course, again, you can't extrapolate that out to refer to... Um, situations of speaking for others that aren't necessarily um, operating along gradients of privilege. But anyway, we, we started with that dilemma, and we've come to the dilemma that is one really of self-reflection, of self-interrogation. Um, to what extent is my desire for mastery of myself expressed as an effective mastery over other people whom I would really like to empower, whom I would really like to have dialogue with, um, whom I would really like to clear space for with the use of my privilege rather than using that privilege as a weapon against them. I think Martine Alcoff wants us to recognize um, to what extent those two can be interchangeable and how, how quickly it can be the case, how easily it can be the case that me trying to use my privilege to help someone else can end up uh, furthering their oppression furthering my um, position over and above them. Um, that's it for Martin Alkoff. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this essay. I think there's a, there's a whole lot more that we could say about it. It opens up a lot of different avenues, um, but I hope you'll, you'll take it with you into your own uh, kind of real life experiences and encounters and your, the, uh, the, the discursive events in which you find yourself implicated. Thanks.